The gaming industry is so fascinating to look at because it's always trying to grow and evolve. We're getting games with better graphics, bigger worlds, better written stories, but more than that, I feel like there's constantly this arms race. Every console manufacturer and game developer is constantly trying to create the best, highest selling experience. And I will say that for the most part, I am a big believer that games are getting better. I do feel like just as an entirety, we keep getting better experiences that are more fun, that are longer, that are just cooler to see especially on the indie side. But there's one major issue that needs to be addressed. Games as a service. The entire concept of it is becoming a freaking cancer. Now, I want to talk about this because just this week, five games as a service projects Major projects that have millions and millions of dollars of budget and production are just completely about to vanish into the ether. And I feel like this is a signal that this as a trend needs to stop. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So starting off, we're over here on Twitter.com taking a look at the Game Awards Twitter account where they have announced that all five of these games are about to shut down. Rumbleverse, Apex Legends, Knockout City, Echo VR, and Battlefield Mobile. Now let's be clear, most of these people didn't care super enthusiastically about, but some of this stuff like Apex Legends Mobile being shut down is a shocking revelation because Apex Legends is obviously an incredibly popular property. Uh, I'm sure that would have made a ton of cash on phones. And even stuff like, you know, Rumbleverse. Looking at the gameplay, this isn't the most shocking, cool, uh, trendy thing ever, but it's weird to me that this game that clearly had a group of developers, it had passionate people trying to make it work, it, it clearly had a decent sized player base, all of this is about to vanish. This game for all of its faults, for all of its great moments, is about to cease to exist and nobody can play it. This is my biggest problem with freaking games as a service, is the concept that there are games that you can buy, that you can enjoy, and then suddenly they just freaking vanish. They delete it out of existence. Even something like Back for Blood. Now, this game is not going offline yet. They've actually said that they're just working on another game, which will probably be called like Back for Five Blood. I don't know, I'm being goofy. But Back for Blood, even this, which is a better games as a service project, kind of irked me because it's just so obsessively focused on that next content patch. How can we sell you more DLC? How can we get you to buy another player? How can we sell you another map or another cosmetic skin? Even beyond the idea of microtransactions, a game like this that's so heavily centered on the idea of content roadmaps, this type of stuff is starting to become so deeply and incredibly toxic. It is damaging to the industry that so many games can just straight up be here, can be played, and then straight up they just vanish. I truly believe that one of the biggest failings of the industry itself is the fact that we're allowing so many games to just be Thanos snapped out of existence. Even something like Knockout City, which is basically like a dodgeball battle royale. Okay, it's not fantastic, but it's weird that it's just gone. Everybody that worked on it, everybody that cared about it, it just completely vanishes. And I think it sucks because this isn't just about like multiplayer games, even stuff that have heavy single player components. Freaking Marvel's Avengers. How did they make an Avengers game that is so bad it got freaking deleted? Like the freaking update that they just released, they're completely cutting all support. I'm still just shocked. After two and a half years, we're introducing the 12th of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and then we're just going to be shutting it down on September 30th. Both single and multiplayer gameplay will continue to be available for now. 
This is my biggest issue with even the idea of always online or games that require you to at least do an internet check periodically is that what happens when the developer shuts down? What happens when the budget get cut? What happens when the freaking contracts run out? Because even something like Avengers, currently they're promising that it will still work. But what happens when this company goes out of business? What happens when the marketing rights, when you legally don't own these characters anymore because it is just a limited time existence? They can delete a game that you bought. They can straight up with games as a service, they can unspend the money that you have used in this universe. It can pretty much ruin the memories you've already built with it. Now, I'm going to go a step further. I think this even attributes to massive projects. Something like World of Warcraft. I've had my love, I've had my hate, I've kind of gone back and forth on World of Warcraft over the years, whether it is classic or the mainstream version of it, but it is really weird to just conceptually ponder the idea that this is a game that is always growing and evolving, and at some point it is just going to stop. That even if you did pay the subscription fee and buy the expansion packs and love the collector's editions, I think even when it comes to MMOs, it is just so bizarre that gamers are becoming accepting of the idea of games as a service as a default. Last night, I was playing a bunch of the Dead Space remake. I finally beat the game on impossible mode and I unlocked the platinum trophy. And when it was done, I actually just sat there for like literally five minutes, kind of in awe about the brilliance of the game itself, how fun and gorgeous it was to play, but also just the fact that it's just so feature complete. We're getting into an era where it does feel like if a game is actually polished, ready to play, has a complete story and decent mechanics, it feels revolutionary just because it doesn't need 18 tweaks and changes and updates to become an actually decent experience. It is bizarre to me that there are actually PlayStation 5 games that are on shelves that don't work. This is Destruction All-Stars. If you try and play it online, the servers are just empty. The single player is bots that are so freaking stupid they literally crash into the wall. Like, it actually makes me genuinely angry that Games as a Service is not only being accepted, it's being defended. Recently, we had the news that freaking uh, uh, Redfall is going to require you to be permanently connected to the internet, even when you're playing the single player. This is obviously the upcoming co-op-centered uh, vampire hunting game by Microsoft. I honestly think the game itself looks fantastic, but I've seen people saying, okay, I'm not going to buy it. I'll check it out because it's on Game Pass, but single player always online translates to no purchase. And I feel like this is... A valid sentiment. I think right now we should be making a bigger deal out of games that say, hey, connect and never disconnect. I've had my complaints. I've had my feedbacks of negativity towards Nintendo, but I will give them credit. When it comes to their games, at least they're feature complete. Fire Emblem Engage is so freaking fun. It's such a long, great story. And this game was 60 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it has like a season pass, but I'm not going to buy that crap. I mean, I'm happy with the game as it currently exists. I am freaking upset because this games as a service problem is starting to soak up the budget of what would be bigger, better games. Yesterday, we got the announcement that basically it confirmed that they were working on a Titanfall 3. And then unfortunately, they canceled it because they just feel like they don't know how to monetize it. This is a clip from Titanfall 2 that is completely freaking epic. It is your robot throwing you to another jet. This scene is so freaking insanely good, and it's a testament to just how amazing Titanfall and even as a single player game, how perfect it was. But we're never going to get a Titanfall 3 because these developers are stuck working on freaking Apex Legends. They're stuck working on a games as a service project. Titanfall is a masterpiece. Titanfall is a game that I feel like is so revolutionary. It's so freaking groundbreaking. And we don't get more of this pivotal art 
because, hey, they are forced to design more skins for Ghost and crap like that. Games as a service has got to be my biggest complaint. Even when done right, even when there is a games as a service game that I feel like is really entertaining, that isn't particularly toxic, I still think I almost prefer a tight single player experience or a game that does have multiplayer, but something that feels fun and contained and complete. More and more, I find myself playing older random games sometimes. Here's my 3DS and uh, the brightness is turned down, but I promise what I have on the screen right now is actually Majora's Mask and Majora's Mask 3D. Okay, it's a million years old, but still, it's crazy to me that these games are just so good. They're so polished. They're so great and they're timeless. You cannot shut this down as at least as it currently exists. The games as a service wave I am afraid is the trend of the future. I am concerned that this is not a temporary issue. I feel like it is a growing stigma. It is a growing problem. It is a growing cancer. And I don't know if we're going to remove the tumor in time. But this has just been some off-the-cuff thoughts. I wanted to kind of vent about it because honestly, this is just something I feel like is going to get better someday, hopefully. But it's going to get worse first. Thank you so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. And thank you to my roommate for taking this cool screenshot of the umbrella. He, uh, he actually helped me take a bunch of cool screenshots in Resident Evil for some new future backgrounds that are in 4K and look brilliant. Aaron, you are the king, brother.